Whenever people ask me like what kind of tablet should they buy, my answer has always been iPad. Not only does it have some of the best hardware specs in this space, but you know iPad OS is also just so much better for the form factor than Android is. But today, today I have what I think is the closest competitor in both hardware and software that I've ever seen to an iPad from the Android camp. This is it. This is the Samsung Galaxy Tab S7 Plus. Okay, so the first time Samsung tried to show me this tablet, I, I, I really wasn't paying much attention because they had this, you know, during the NDA session with both the new Galaxy Notes and also the, the new Galaxy Buds Live. So I was like busy trying to do that instead of uh, look at their new tablet because I thought, you know, it's just another Android tablet. Like, how good could it be? I've seen one, I've seen them all, right? Well, not quite because you know how I said like this is a proper competitor in both hardware and software? Well, it turns out that the Tab S7 Plus actually has like a few tricks up its sleeve that I think are, I, I, that are pretty cool. I'll admit it, they're pretty cool. So we'll start with the hardware. So this device, like Samsung has gone all out with it, okay? It has a Snapdragon 865 Plus processor. So that's like the best processor Qualcomm makes. Uh, it's not an Exynos processor, so I know quite a lot of you will be happy with that. Uh, on top of that, this device has 8 gigs of RAM and 256 gigs of internal storage. So again, that's, you know, lots of power, lots of memory, um, which is like more than good enough. And if you want even more memory or more storage, rather, you can also upgrade it um, with a micro SD card. So it will take up to one terabyte micro SD card, so you can have plenty of storage for your needs. But the first thing that really impressed me about this tablet is the screen. So this device has a 12.4 inch AMOLED display and it pushes a resolution of WQXGA which is like super high res, it's even higher resolution than like Quad HD uh, and it also has a refresh rate of 120 hertz. So it's like the same kind of refresh rate as their high-end smartphone so it's really fast, really smooth, everything is like super buttery but now you can run the high refresh rate with the high resolution which is really nice. And I gotta say, like I've seen like the high-end iPad screens, uh, and this looks as good, if not better. I think it might even be better, especially for like um, viewing content or stuff that you might want a lot of contrast in, because this is an AMOLED display instead of like the LCD panels that you get on the iPads. Um, so yeah, this is like really just an amazing screen. It has um, pretty slim bezels too, though. I mean, it's not as slim as like their smartphone counterparts, but for a tablet, I think this is more than good enough. Also, one thing to note is that the camera is where I think is the correct place for a camera on a tablet, uh, which is right in the middle of the screen when it's in landscape mode, because I feel like that's how you're gonna be using this device most of the time anyway. Keeping the lights on is a 10,090 milliamp hour battery, which uh, Samsung says, I believe it's like, it can give you up to 14 hours of usage, which is um, really good. Uh, it is a pretty big cell, um, which means that this device actually has like quite a heft to it. It's just over 500 grams for the tablet alone, which is not ridiculous, but it's nice to see that it has a big battery. It charges via USB type C. Um, which is good, so you don't have like proprietary ports to deal with. Um, but here's the annoying thing about it, there is no headphone jack. It's just, I guess you have to accept it, but it's so much harder for me to accept on a, like a productivity device, like a tablet, compared to like a smartphone, because smartphone is like, eh, okay lah, just Bluetooth it, right? This one, I like to use my monitoring headphones and those are all wired. The upside though is that this device has like freaking awesome speakers. So there are quad speakers uh, on the Tab S7 Plus and they sound really good. I think they're like definitely up there with like the iPads uh, of the world, the iPad Pros of the world. Uh, they have plenty of volume, they sound really full, there's really nice uh, left to right separation. So I'm very, very happy with these speakers. So hot. The Proton X50 is probably the most exciting SUV in Malaysia for 2020. Ooh. And now, we get a chance to sit behind the wheels of the new SUV. Let's go check it out. Ooh. <laughs> Feels like I'm in the car. 
for the media drive, Proton has provided more details for its three-cylinder turbo engine. So yeah, these are like super awesome speakers. I think they're better not only than most tablets, but they're also better than most laptops. They're definitely better than my laptop, uh, which has like quite crappy speakers. Um, but yeah, really good experience. Though I don't know if I would, uh, it's still like a bit of a, a headache. Like I don't want to trade off the 3.5mm headphone jack for speakers, but I guess it's nice that there are nice speakers. And you can still always use your Bluetooth headphones. And speaking of hardware, I mean this tablet itself is just really, really well built. Uh, so let me just pull off the keyboard and the portfolio case. So yeah, as you can see, the tablet has like a really nice sort of industrial design. You get like the really, I, I kind of like these sharp edges, um, but they're not sharp in a way that it feels like it'll cut your hand. Um, but it is like really nice and smooth and like metallic. It, it just feels like a, like a well-machined device. La. Like all the little gaps between the screen and the bezels are like, uh, like machined to to the millimeter, it feels like uh, it's, it's, it's really good. I really liked it when Apple made the switch from like the rounded iPad design aesthetic to like their more squared off industrial ones. Uh, and I really like that, you know, Samsung is also taking a page out of that book. What I don't like though is uh, how you stick on the pen. So this uh, tablet also comes with an S Pen, or oh, it doesn't come, wait, does it come with an S Pen? But the S Pen, you know, it doesn't stick. So uh, if you're familiar with the iPads or even the Huawei Mate Pads, um, they just, it, it magnetizes to the top here. So it's really easy to find, really easy to stick on. But for the Samsung device, um, there is like this strip uh, at the back here that's kind of smooth and glossy to tell you, okay, put the pen here. And then there's like a flat side of the pen that corresponds to the strip. But you can't just like, it doesn't work. You have to like, you have to find the right place and be like, uh and then it sticks. So it's a very specific way of, of uh, sticking on the pen. And if you're like using it like a, like a, you know, like a laptop or a device when you're typing it like this, it's really hard to sort of find the right spot to, to, ah, there you go, to, to stick on. It also doesn't work on uh, the other way. You have to, it, it has to be this way which is, yeah, it's like less than ideal. Uh, I'm not sure why they went with this option. Maybe they didn't want to make it seem like they were copying Apple, but I feel like if the design is better that way, then you should go for the better design. But yeah, that's pretty much it for the hardware. Everything is really, really high end, really, really nice and well built. Uh, I was actually more interested in the software. So Samsung's uh, tablet is designed to be a productivity tool. That's why it, uh, comes with, well for now it comes with um, this keyboard and folio set. Um, so the thing that I was a bit on the fence about is that it's two pieces so it's like you gotta attach it. You got it. Okay. Not the most elegant solution but you know it is what it is. Um, so it, it does, uh, Samsung does have a proper folio and keyboard uh, set up for this tablet, which I really appreciate. I actually quite like the keyboard because the keyboard has these like uh, chiclet style keys, which is a lot more like a laptop's keys, uh, uh, which is which makes it really nice to type on rather than like the like normal iPad um, keyboard. The normal iPad smart keyboard layout, which was always like a bit like you don't feel the tactile bump, this one you have that. Uh, so in that sense, it's like more similar to the Apple Magic keyboard um, which is good so I think this is a way better way to do tablet keyboards um, but the one thing that I don't like about it is actually trackpad because I think the texture feels really weird and um, the clicking does not have that satisfying click it does not feel like a high quality trackpad and that's a bit disappointing because when you look at the tablet it's like so well built and so a machine and now the keyboard feels a bit more like an afterthought that way which is like a bit disappointing um, but yeah so anyway with this uh, hinge though it's actually really flexible so Samsung says it can go up to hundred and sixty five degrees which means you can go like basically flat on this thing so if you look here can go basically flat and it's really rigid so even if you have it at like this angle and you want to draw stuff you know, just get the pen out you want to draw stuff on it it's actually really nice uh, like it holds its place so I think you feel like an artist or something you want to write or draw stuff I think this hinge is actually really flexible really nice but yeah I don't I'm not a big fan of the fact that it's two pieces and also the keyboard doesn't have like a like a bit of a raised surface so the typing position isn't super great 
But the, the honestly, the most egregious thing about this keyboard setup though is the fact that when you close it, it doesn't it doesn't line up properly. Like you gotta move it up, and even then, it doesn't really hold its position. Um, it still feels like it, it feels too loose. So I don't understand why this is the case. Like. I've, I've used plenty of two-in-one devices. I've used Surfaces, I've used, um, uh, what was that device called? The Acer something or other, Switch Alpha 12. Um, I've used uh, Lenovo's Mix devices, I've used iPads, and none of them have had this problem. So, <laughs> and that's so wild to me because Samsung's so good at making hardware, they're so good at making like all these physical things that go with all the devices. So. Uh, why is why is this this feels a lot like an oversight to me and uh, well that's kind of disappointing for such a high-end tablet but anyway that's it for the hardware discussion what I was more interested in is the software so this uh, device runs Android obviously and Android is not the best tablet operating system um, using it even with the keyboard and and even with like an attached mouse because it supports mouse uh, input it's just not that great. Multitasking isn't that um, fluid. It's not as intuitive as something like an iPad. You don't really have like a proper dock. Uh, you can use the edge panels to, to sort of supplement that, um, which I guess is a nice thing. But the thing that really makes this tablet experience special is the fact that you can use Samsung DeX uh, on this tablet. So like you can use DeX, you can turn this into like DeX mode. This was a new thing that Samsung introduced, I think with the Tab S6, but this is the first time I'm using it on one of their tablets. And I gotta say that it definitely changes the experience. So in order to enable DeX, all you need to do is go into the settings menu, um, pull down the menu and then you tap DeX. And it's like, ooh, Samsung DeX, ring. And then after a while, it will boot into like this. You know, if you're familiar with DeX, it's like their desktop operating system. Um, and it's definitely way better for multitasking. So for example, you get all your apps down here like you would on like a Mac or a Windows device. You get like a button here for all your apps to bring up all your apps. Uh, you still have your notifications over here. Uh, and then you have some icons on your desktop over here. So all of this is like fully customizable. Everything that you launch also comes up in like individual windows. So you have like specific windows for it, which is really useful for multitasking and we use this with a mouse, it's cool. And you can even snap windows to the side of the device. Um, like for example, if I do this here, oh wait a minute, is that not how you do it? So yeah, you can have two windows side by side, which looks really good um, and it works pretty much the way you would expect a desktop uh, operating system to work. The only difference is that like if you're in something like Chrome, you can't actually like uh, open like a new Chrome tab and then like drag that tab out that part is still kind of limited, uh, so it's not quite like a Windows experience there. Um, but for, I, I would say it's like 80% um, like using like a proper desktop and that really changes the experience. So I haven't really spent a lot of time with this device yet. I've had like maybe a day with it. Um, so if you really wanna know like how well this device functions as like a productivity device, definitely stay tuned for the full review because uh, Nick will be doing that. And uh, if you have any questions for him, you can leave them in the comment section below. So yeah, I think with the kind of hardware that you're getting here and with DeX to sort of really take the Android tablet experience to the next level, I think that the Tab S7 Plus uh, with all its power is definitely a very interesting device to consider if you're looking for like a proper tablet, but you don't want to buy an iPad for whatever reason. But here's the thing that you should know that this is not an affordable tablet at all. This is um, right up there with like iPad pricing. I think spec for spec, it's very similar. So this device is priced at 4,599 ringgit. Um, for now, if you buy it, it will come with the keyboard. Otherwise, then the keyboard is like an optional accessory. I think it costs like about another thousand ringgit if you want to buy it. So if you're really looking for uh, a tablet or this tablet, uh, I would suggest that you get it now so that you get the keyboard as well included in the price. As for what I think about this device, I think that DeX definitely helps with the productivity aspect of the tablet and if your tablet can be more productive than your phone, then you know it's kind of serving its purpose. It's like supposed to be this in-between device um, that's you know airing more towards the side of like a laptop. Um, so I really like what Samsung has done with uh, the inclusion of DeX in their tablets. But is it really good enough to really replace uh, your computer or to you know take it to some, to Apple um, with their excellent iPad OS uh, operating system that still remains to be seen um, because you know 
uh, Nick's going to have to use this for the extended period of time that it's uh, required and give you a full review on that. But um, that is it for my first impressions for the Samsung Galaxy Tab S7 Plus. I'm actually really interested to find out, you know, how this uh, will perform in the long run. So definitely, you, you, so you definitely want to stay tuned for that video. Um, but yeah, that is it for this video, uh, this first impressions of the Samsung Galaxy Tab S7 Plus. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Uh, let me know what you think of this device in the comment section below. If you've used like, if you've used like one of their previous tablets before um, with DeX, you know, let me know your thoughts. Uh, I'd love to hear them in the comment section too. Um, but yeah, that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, if you liked it, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and um, you can like us on Facebook, but our home on the internet will always be at sojinchao.com. Uh, until next time, I'm Rory and I'll see you then. Bye.